Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Erislandi Lara has a reputation for being kind of boring. But when you consider the fact that even though he's 41 now, he's picking up a little bit of a reputation as being a bit of a banger. Um, and it's not surprising because he's got that Cuban, um, you know, technique, schooling. But he's always had a little bit of pop. And against Michael Zarafa, who came in with uh, 31 wins and four defeats, 19 KOs in the wins column, he'd been stopped before by, I want to say, Kid Chocolate. Was it Kid Chocolate years ago? Yeah, Peter Quillen, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was. I can't remember when. This is eight, nine, ten years ago even. It was a long, long time ago um, because Sarafa is 32. He's been around a long, long time. But Lara stopped Sarafa with uh, one punch, basically, which was his pet, uh, his southpaw, pet backhand, right, uh, left cross. He blinded Zarafa, uh in the second round with, with the jab, the southpaw jab, whipped across the, uh, the left cross, Landed on the side of Zarafa's face, knocked him over. He was very, very heavily knocked down. He was conscious. He tried to get up, but his legs just betrayed him, and he sort of fell backwards into a corner, and the ref rightly stopped it. Now, there was only a second left in, in the second round, one second left. But, you know, Lara, we know he's got a beautiful technique. In the first round, he was he was doing all right. Uh, you know, he, he, was, he was having a look, finding his rhythm, no problem, Zarafa. Didn't do anything wrong. In fact, Zarafa didn't really do anything wrong in the whole fight. He just got tagged by a guy who's got great technique. Um, and there was there's really a great more to say about this one. I mean, it was, I do think Lara's reputation precedes him because he was, you know, sort of a, he was doing this usual thing and the crowd started booing as early as the first round, maybe the start of the second round, those American crowds, they're heartless. It doesn't, it doesn't take much for them to, to start, you know, <laughs> booing with, for no good reason. It, uh, you know, give, give the guy a chance. And of course, when he got his motor running, added to the technique, you know, when he started letting his hands go, he knocked out Zarafa. I mean, this was a defense of um, Lara's WBA world middleweight title. And you can say, well, what the hell was was Zarafa doing in the ring? I mean, who's he beaten? You know, he's... I don't think he had a fight last year. And he's been over in Australia. He's Australian. I mean, well, when you think about it, he lost a majority decision to Jeff Horn. He actually stopped Horn in nine rounds in their first fight and then lost a majority decision. Since then, who's he got? Anthony Mundine, he knocked him out in one round. Mundine was completely shot to bits. He's beaten a few other low-level guys. Um... Actually, I'd say that his, his last two fights were against undefeated but untested Australian fellas. I think they were Australians anyway. One was, I can't remember one. One was called Isaac Hardman, who I didn't know anything about. I can't remember the other one, but they were both undefeated. Uh, so he, he didn't really earn the title shot, not really, but nothing against the fella. You know, he got his chance. He tried to take it. Like I say, he didn't do anything wrong. He just lost to the better man. So big up, Lara. Um, where does he go from here? I mean, he's either he's 40 or 41, nearly 41 maybe. Um, and he, he, he didn't fight in 2023 actually because his last fight was against Spike O'Sullivan. And that was a pretty good fight. He stopped him in eight rounds. Um, he dominated him, but Spike was pretty game. Um, but he's had hold of this belt for God knows how long, about six or seven, eight years or something. I, can't even, I don't even know, eight years? And he hasn't really beaten anyone of, of like you know the absolute top he hasn't beaten you know the, the top echelon of fighters he did lose to Jared I think this is might be his second I, I think this I'm doing this off memory but this might be his second stint as a WBA champ because he lost to Jarrett Hurd didn't he split decision so I can't remember I know he's had this I know he's been the, one of the WBA's favourite sons and they do have him don't they I mean look at Manuel Char for Christ's sake um, I know he beat Vanes Matarosian. I mean, he, he goes back to like Yuri Foreman, beating Yuri Foreman. It's been around forever, Lara. And he's never really, you know, torn up any trees. I mean, he's 30 wins with 18 KOs, 30 including the, the Zarafa one. Three defeats all on points. And then I think he's got three draws in the mix. But he's never really, because probably because of his style, he's a little bit dull, but well, he used to be a little bit dull. But he's never really torn up any trees, has he? I mean, 
you know, who's, who else has he beaten? I mean, Ronald Hearns, he beat him once. <laughs> he lost to Paul Williams, majority, I think it was a majority decision, or a split maybe. Um, he beat, I don't know who else did he beat? I think he beat Alfredo Angulo back in the day. Uh, he'd fought Alvarez, of course. The, the one that everyone talks about is of his three defeats is the Saul Alvarez one, which was a split decision defeat. And I definitely thought he beat Alvarez there. Well, it was close. People say it was, ah, oh, he was robbed. You know, yeah, I thought he won. I thought he did win, definitely. But yeah. Anyway, job done for uh, Atlera's Landy Lara. He's continu- he continues his career. Bad luck to Michael Zarafa. What did you think? What do you think of Lara? Do you think he's really going anywhere? If so, who should he fight? Leave your comments below um, and subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the like button. I would appreciate that a great deal. I will catch you later. Bye for now.